Right, let's get more now on the Home Office report into tackling drug abuse here, which suggests tough penalties don't work. The research compared policy in the UK with that of countries across the world. The results have caused a row within the coalition. David Cameron insists the government's policy is working and says drug use will not be decriminalised. The Liberal Democrat leader, Nick Clegg, says the survey shows the government's war on drugs is failing. Well, I'm joined now by Sarah Graham, who's an addiction counsellor and is herself a recovering addict. I think 13 years, did you say? I'll be 13 clear? years in December, yeah. Um, tell us what you, what, where you sit on this, because this is going to be hugely contentious, isn't mm. it? It's going to open up a whole big debate again. Yeah, I'm slightly amazed to find myself on the uncool bench in this debate, as I said to the Oxford Union back in June. Uh, the reality is that drugs use is falling, and the reality is that educational interventions and, and a lot of the stuff that we've been doing, investing in treatment, has paid off. Uh, by far the best way to tackle addiction uh, for those who are addicted is treatment, of course, rather than prison. However, I think that the Liberal Democrats are, being, are, are, are taking this in a very dangerous direction by therefore, therefore implying that we need to move towards uh, you know, not having a classification system. You know, I was really won over uh, to, the, to the cause of classification by the situation with legal highs. You know, if we look at what happened with methadrone, which was a legal high, uh, which was freely available, people were buying it by the kilo off the internet, it was being marketed on the internet, even on my social media site, people were selling it. And it became a huge problem very quickly, even though it was being sold as plant food. Uh, and it was very cheap, uh, it was very available. Lots of young people were presenting in clinics like mine and saying, well, yes, I'm using this substance, and yes, I'm having some bad symptoms, but it must be OK because it's legal. And, of course, it wasn't OK, and now we have a lot of young people who are really addicted to methadrone and even injecting it. So that shows that we actually need a classification system. When we classified that drug, suddenly it's a lot more expensive. It can't be advertised. It can't be pushed at young people. So is it, though, let me, let me try, and, try and separate a couple of things then. So you're saying, uh, and this... In this, you would agree with the Prime Minister that if you decriminalise something, you're effectively saying it's OK, and that in itself could cause a problem. As an addiction expert, I can tell you that the two biggest drug problems that we have in this society are alcohol and cigarettes in terms of, in terms of the number of people killed. is off the scale when you compare it to illegal drugs. A lot of these substances are very addictive. They're very moorish. I don't know if you've tried crack cocaine or heroin. I have. They're very pleasant. They're very nice in terms of the immediate effect. However, they, they capture a high percentage of people who experiment with them. And that's the population that we've got to worry about if we move towards legalisation. It's those people who will casually try things because it's no longer against the law and it's no longer something that's difficult for them to obtain. Right. Now, but is it... But is your position then that this should still be criminalised, but it shouldn't be perhaps so punitive? Because I would get, I'm guessing here, I don't know your circumstances, but if somebody said, if you take that drug, you'll go to jail, would it have, would it have stopped you? Absolutely not. And right. that's where I do agree with this, this uh, piece of evidence. The reality is, if you're an addict, you are so compelled to use the substance that you will ignore any sanction. People who get threatened with life uh, in prison in, in very punitive countries will ignore that because the addiction is much more powerful. Those aren't the people that uh, we need to think about. We need to think about the general population and we need to think about the fact that currently a lot of those substances, uh, because they are classified, are controlled. Uh, and if we do uh, take away that control, what happens then? We have lobbyists. You know, we haven't got a minimum unit price of alcohol in this country because the alcohol industry lobbied the Prime Minister very hard and won. Do we really want paid lobbyists from the heroin, cocaine, crystal meth lobby being able to have influence? Do we really want ad advertisements that are legally sanctioned for these products? I don't think so. So ju ju just a, a final thought then, because this will open up a huge debate. From where you sit, seeing addicts, being in recovery yourself, knowing about this, uh, is there still a better way of dealing with it than we're dealing with it now? that this report could at least spark us towards? Absolutely. We need to invest in proper abstinence-based treatment. So many people out there are being put on methadone who don't want to go on methadone. They want to become abstinent. We don't actually treat those people in a way that gets them clean. You know, parents come and see me, and if their child has an addiction, uh, there's no teen rehab in this country for teenagers if they're addicted to cannabis or any other substance. Rich parents can send their kid to the States. Poor parents are stuck with a system that really fails them. The mental health services are not appropriate for young people's addictions in this country. Sarah, very interesting to talk to you. Sarah Graham, thanks very much.